congregation. The Lord be with you. Jesus loves you. This we know, for the Bible tells us so. My name is Dane. My sweetie of 47 years is Carolyn. She's going to our church at the time. She lived in Garfield. Look at Pastor Lee's instructions for me here today. <laughs> Like those who go down to the pit, 
Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to him. in 
his shabby clothing also comes in. And if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and my beloved sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law that fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, my sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body. What good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith. I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Let's please stand for the Alleluia and the Holy Gospel. Sir. 
servant him. Onward, Christian soldiers. Church in Parker's Prairie, Minnesota, those of you who are saints and faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, the world's only Savior, greetings in his name. Our text is Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Finally, let the Lord and his mighty power make you strong. Put on God's whole armor and you will be able to stand against the devil's tricky ways. You are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, and lords of this dark world, against the evil spirits that are above. This is why you should take God's whole armor, 
Then you can resist when things are at their worst. And having done everything, you can hold your ground. Stand then with truth as a belt fastened around your waist, with righteousness covering you as a breastplate, and with shoes on your feet, ready to bring the good news of peace. Besides all these, take faith as the shield with which you can put out all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take salvation as your helmet and the spirit sword, which is God's word. Pray at all times in the spirit, using every kind of prayer. Be alert and keep at it continually as you pray for all the holy people and our theme, Onward, Christian Soldiers! Amen. Happy listening. Since July 12th, as of last Sunday, our assigned epistle lessons have been from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Christians in Ephesus. The Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write all that he did, concluding his letter with the text that I just read. So it's fitting that we review some of the main teachings that come before our text, since the people he was writing to were both saints and sinners, it's recorded in scripture so we can hear it today as saints and sinners. We are forgiven. We are members of God's family. We are members of Christ's church. So it's necessary to share these truths concerning forgiveness, eternal life in heaven by grace through faith in Jesus, who lived a perfect life for us. Then taking our punishment, he shed his blood for us on Calvary's cross. And Jesus provided salvation for everyone in the whole world, both Jews and Gentiles, without any works on our part. And Paul then writes about expressing our faith so that it can be noticeable, so that it can be felt and seen and tasted and touched. We're doing a life of good works according to God's absolute standard of morality, briefly stated in the Ten Commandments. Now this includes warnings against giving in to the devil's temptations to sins of sexual impurity, including homosexuality, living together without marriage, killing or hurting anyone, including the unborn, every form of uncleanness, greed, lying, foolish talking, or crude joking. And our James epistle lesson that we recall also mentions that a life of good works avoids showing partiality. And it includes loving your neighbor as yourself by helping supply bodily needs such as food and clothing. Paul includes encouragement for each and every member of the congregation to remain true to Jesus and in faith, true to the word of God with Christ-like living in whatever special vocation God has called you in private and public settings. Such vocations include the responsibilities and duties of husbands and wives and children and students and employers and employees. And e emphasis is given to God's vocation in the gifts of pastors and teachers who are to equip the laity for their personal and congregational ministries at home and abroad. All vocations are to be lived out, expressing faith with humility and patience and peace and meekness and love, and doing it as unto the Lord himself. Each Christian ought to obey God rather than man. And on this Sunday before Labor Day, it's good to mention that our vocation our work 
is a gift from God, a blessing from God. Each and every person, young and old, single, married, retired, is a vital, important member of Christ's church. God shows no favoritism. However, do you remember this passage? To whom much is given, much is required. Each Christian, each and every one of us, is to strive to follow Jesus' example of thinking, speaking, and behaving, and being loving, forgiving, respectful, being honest, not stealing, and in general, by doing what is good and right according to God's absolute standard. Imitating God in everything we do as his dear children, following Jesus' loving example, will allow the Holy Spirit to lead us believers to believe and behave according to our new creation in Christ. This will encourage fellow believers and also reach out to unbelievers for their salvation. And while following Jesus, we will resist giving in to the devil's temptations to sin. Now thinking of all of God's blessings and his grace, Paul mentions and gives the Christian response. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Amen to that? Yes. And after all of this teaching concerning believing and behaving the truth, and by the way, the truth is the truth, no matter what, if people believe it or not, it is the truth. The Holy Spirit inspired Paul to make these concluding words. Now think about what we just shared. Now here's the text again. Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. Finally, let the Lord and his mighty power make you strong. Put on God's whole armor and you will be able to stand against the devil's tricky ways. You're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, and lords of this dark world, against the evil spirits that are above. This is why you should take God's whole armor. Then you can resist when things are at their worst and having done everything, you can hold your ground. Stand then with truth as a belt fastened around your waist, with righteousness covering you as a breastplate and with shoes on your feet, ready to bring the good news of peace. Besides all these, take faith as the shield with which you can put out all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take salvation as your helmet and the spirit sword, which is God's word. Pray at all times in the spirit, using every kind of prayer. Be alert and keep at it continually as you pray for all the holy people. Now, with these words, Paul teaches us that we are daily in a spiritual war led by the devil and his evil angels. Their main goal is to cause us believers to give in to their evil temptations to sin against our God. To sin against the truth of God. Now we know that God will forgive all confessed sins for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. However, if personal sins are not confessed due to a refusal to repent, faith and salvation would be lost. Giving in to the devil also causes conflict and division within congregations shown in a lack of love and respect and unity when not quickly dealt with. Both personal and congregational life would therefore become a bad witness. However, with these words, 
we are also given blessed assurance for remaining faithful to Jesus as long as we use God's whole armor with his help. It's very interesting that word pictures of a Roman soldier's armor are referred to when teaching about the spiritual dress and armament God provides for us to win the daily battles against the devil's temptations. Please note that putting on and using these spiritual gifts and following God's battle plan assures us of victory with our Savior over the devil, the unbelieving world, and our old Adam. We realize that the sword of the Spirit is the word of God, our belt of truth on which we stand securely. God's word is the means of grace through which the Holy Spirit gave us faith in Jesus and sustains it together with our baptism and Holy Communion. The blessings of our faith includes Christ's righteousness as our own breastplate of righteousness, our helmet of salvation and God's peace that equips us to use our feet in readiness to go and make disciples of all the nations. And Romans 10, 14 asks, how are people to believe in Jesus whom they have never heard? Do you agree that our society and our culture needs the Savior, Jesus Christ? in his way of life. Not only for the well-being of our country, but as a good example for all the countries on planet Earth. And as we go, we are thankful that Jesus promises to always be with us as we share his good news, beginning where? At home, in your marriage, in your family, in your relationships, here at Emmanuel, or the home church that you represent as a visitor here. So realizing our need for further assurance as we go and share, our Savior lovingly teaches us in 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering, including the devil's temptations, are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. So that we will not fear losing our faith since we promise to grow in Christ and share his love with the Spirit's help, God's word comforts and assures us in Matthew 16, 18, Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Also Philippians 1, 6. He, the Holy Spirit, who began a good work of faith in you, will perform it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And our Savior himself promises Christians, and we're referred to as his sheep, in John 10, 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice, the voice of his word as we have it in the Holy Scriptures. And I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Now with all this, we need to emphasize the need for fervent prayer of petition and thanksgiving as our text mentions. And our James Epistle lesson also emphasizes that we are to support our prayers with good works as faithful witnesses. Let us be determined to show our faith by our works. We are to be daily prepared with God's armor to resist the devil. 
Please remember the devil works through our old Adam. The Holy Spirit works through our new man. Jesus informs us in Mark 7, 21 and 22. Out of a person's heart come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. I agree, that's what comes out of my sinful heart. And daily I'm saying, God, be merciful, forgive me. What now should we think about when we have these coming up just all of a sudden? Remember your baptism. What does such baptizing with water signify? It signifies that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil lusts. And again, a new man daily come forth and arise who shall live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Well, where is this written? St. Paul writes Romans chapter 6, and this is right in our Luther Small Catechism. We are buried with Christ by baptism into death, that like as he was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk, that is, live in newness of life. Thankfully, Paul's letter to the Ephesians has been preserved by God for the benefits of Christ's church until Jesus returns. And Paul's prayer is a good one for us here at Emmanuel. Here's his prayer. It's a good prayer for each one of us. Not only for your pastor to pray for you, but you to pray for him and one another. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now all these truths, and there are many more in the scriptures, both the Old and the New Testaments, that support our theme. Onward, Christian soldiers! Heaven is our destination. And after this very important teaching concerning the Christian spiritual warfare armor, Paul ends his letter with greetings and prayerful blessings, and I'll conclude my message with these same words of prayerful blessings for each and every one of you. Please receive this personally. Peace to you, brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Let's stand, please. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus until our own death or until the Lord returns. Amen. We'll now sing the offertory.
may be seated now as we, we receive the offerings and please you, your dear pastor said remind the people to sign the friendship register so I'm glad Alzheimer's hasn't set in yet and I remember to say that to you so ushers will give you the offering plates remember God loves a cheerful giver whatever the gift may be so a happy cheerful giving
We ask your presence, protection, and guidance for all military personnel, all law enforcement, domestic and wildfire fighters on land and in the air, that the terrible, destructive wildfires out west can be quickly contained and put out. Please draw closer to yourself and comfort the families and friends of those who have lost, lost loved ones who died in the line of duty. We pray for honesty and trustworthiness for all those running for offices in our governments, as well as the same for the news media. Please continue to have mercy and grace upon the USA and do and or allow whatever is necessary for our country to repent and return back to you as one nation under God and following the Holy Scriptures for true morality and proper use of our legislative, executive, and judicial branches of government upon which our nation was founded and be true to our Constitution. Lord, in your mercy. God of all health and life, we pray that you would bring health, healing, and safe travel to your people according to your will. As you comfort us with words like, fear not, trust me, be strong in faith. We pray for those we name in our hearts and those individual, special, personal people printed in the bulletin. Strengthen them with your word and grace. Strengthen their caregivers. Give wisdom to doctors and nurses and caregivers so that they give the proper care that you desire for their well-being. Help each person suffering to look to you for comfort, patience, and peace in the midst of their pain so that they can continue to be good and faithful witnesses. We pray to keep fellow Christians faithful to our Savior and His Word with special mention of those suffering persecution like Kim Davis County Clerk in Kentucky who is in jail for obeying God rather than man. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for all of our blessings of body and soul for this life as well as for the life to come. With special mention made of our faith, answered prayers, improved health, your word in our own language, baptism and communion, forgiveness, peace, purposeful, meaningful lives, the certainty of heaven, dear special spouses and family and friends, and our freedoms and birthdays and anniversaries and sunshine and moonlight and for rain. Lord, you know we need some rain. We pray for that according to your will and protection from storms. We thank you for the blessings of field and garden produce, for healthy cattle, for flowers and music and musical instruments, singing and happy memories. Thank you for our vocations and our work and bless all students and teachers and bus drivers for this new school year. Please continue to comfort us who miss loved ones and friends you have taken to our heavenly home with a certain hope of being together again in the upcoming family reunion of your church. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
made seeds for this as well as the closing hand. Because I noticed three lines below the end, Pastor uh, Lee said, this is how I do it, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Thank you. 